Hey everyone, welcome back to the Box of Inspiration show. I'm Joseph and today I have John Pagulayan with me. Thank you, John, for, for being here. You're welcome, man. You're welcome. And um, but to be honest, I'm, I'm pumped up <laughs> to, awesome. to, be, to be here. Awesome. I'm excited to have you, man. We've known each other for a while now and I know the value that you give. So I'm very excited to have you here. And John is helping business owners to convert more leads to customers uh, using email. And now I know you've been working with Ryan for a while now. Are you still doing that right. or? Yeah, I'm, I'm one of his um, Ask Method uh, specialists wherein uh, we, we kind of coach business owners, like not just email, but basically their whole business model and help them implement the Ask Method in, in a way. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. What we do. For those of you who don't know, he, he's working with Ryan Levesque and the Ask Team, as you just said, but you're also helping and teaching freelancers, right? To get more project, <laughs> yeah. projects, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's more like a, a pet project of mine. I mean, it's like, you know, the, uh, I mean, every every entrepreneur's goal is to like reach six figures. Right? That's like the first, you know, milestone. Obviously. So when I, when I, yeah. So, and then, um, so when I got that, when I got through six figures uh, doing copy, uh, writing emails, my first instinct was like, you know, just to give back. And I've been planning this for over a year now. Um, and I've been suffering the expert, you know, the you're not an expert syndrome. Right, yeah. the imposter syndrome. So it, it took me over a year until someone, you know, grabbed me from over the shadows and said, "Dude, you're making six figures." I mean, no one here, you know, in, in this part of the globe is is doing that, right? So come here, let me, you know, let me put you out there, speak on stage, blah blah blah, and and it all snowballed, you know, snowballed from there. I, I'm even now, up to now, I'm so amazed. Like, how did I freaking do it? It's like. <laughs> <laughs> so there basically they just grabbed you they were like john you are an expert help us out talk talk with us about this <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's basically what happened <laughs> <laughs> and in this interview we will focus on email copy and cover subject lines uh email structure and a few more things but uh before we do that john uh tell the viewers those of the viewers who don't know who you are uh, share with them who you are and what you do. Okay. Well, for those who don't, you know, have no idea who I am, I'm, my name is John Pagulayan. It's uh, like, you know, like Joseph's um, name. It's kind of spelled differently. But anyways, I, I, I always tell, uh, you know, everyone that asks me, like, I write emails for a living. That's, that's the only thing that I do, really. I write emails for a living. And... Um, I've been writing emails for like three years now, and if you know, I'm not allowed to mention names here, but I, they they kind of call me the underground email copywriter because you know some of the gurus that are that you've been reading emails from, those are for me. So <laughs> chances are you've you know you've already read my email at some point in an, or another. Yeah, so that's what I do. Yeah, chances <laughs> are you know who John is, but you just don't know about it, um, and. I mean, it must be like a dream. As you said, you're just writing emails for a living. I mean, that, that's like, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of surreal, I think. I mean, whenever I wake up and then I say to myself, like, okay, so what am I going to do next? I usually just like work like three to four hours in a day, just like four emails a day, and, and then that's it. So it's kind of surreal if you know, you know, when I think about it compared to what I'm doing before where I'm like work, 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 you know, work. And then nothing, you know, no money comes in. But now like I just read an email. Okay. I'm done. Okay. I may just made another uh, thousand bucks or something. Mm. <laughs> it's just like, That's it's awesome. Like that. That's awesome. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the opt-in pages that are mm -hmm. very much related to emails um, before we cover the emails itself. And I'm a firm believer in modeling what's working, either if it's working for me or for someone else that's in a similar position to me, in a similar niche to me. Uh, mm -hmm. But I see so many different things that are working, everything from a beautiful design landing page, very personal, to a landing page that uh, only has like a white background, black text, and an opt-in form. Um, 
And obviously there goes a lot of testing into what's working, but what's your take on that? Okay. Uh, first I'm going to, you know, like give the, the principle that I, that I really follow when it comes to opt-in pages, right? I don't really look at the conversion, mm -hmm. you know, or marketers, right? So how's it great for it? 25% uh, minus like 70%. Awesome. Right. But in, in reality, um, I follow the lifetime customer value. So whichever opt-in page brings the most lifetime customer value, no matter how low that, low that opt-in page is, that's, that's what we're going for. Now, for example, in, uh, let me give you an example, like uh, in a make money market that, I'm, that, I'm, that we're in, we have had like those simple headlines. Have you seen, like, have you seen those like, simple headline, <laughs> then name an email. Sometimes mm -hmm. there's not even a name, but like an email, right? Low commitment. And we have way above like fifty percent, so like you know, as high as eighty percent. But here's the thing: we get you know like only a quarter of, of the revenue compared to the ones where we have like a professional-looking uh, webinar opt-in mm -hmm. that only converts like twenty-five percent. So you have to take those into you know consideration, right? You can't judge a an opt-in based on that's design, based on how it's converting. Rather, how what you know this. This, um, this opt-in, what's the lifetime customer value that that, that opt-in has? So uh, another thing is that um, it, also it, it would depend on the lead magnet. We've noticed that the, the, you know, the higher commitment the lead magnet is, okay, the higher commitment, let's say it's a webinar or it's a long audio, compared to eBooks, people mm -hmm. tend to buy more. That's, that's what we've been, you know, that's what we've been testing. So I don't, know, I don't know about you, but if you're selling like $7 products to the $27 product range, stick with an ebook. That's kind of like, you know, the simplest way to go about it. But if you're selling something that's, you know, a thousand bucks and above or 500 bucks and above, go with, uh, you know, go with a, uh, an opt-in, um, you know, bribe. That's, that's going to take a whole lot of commitment so that when they go to your email, Okay, so when they go through email, they're more engaged and they're more prone to buy compared to, you know, just having a list of names, with, you know, without them doing anything really. <laughs> I prefer having, you know, 20 engaged ones compared to 100 who doesn't do anything. So, yeah, that, that's my, you know, that's my take on those option pages. I love that you mentioned the, uh, the numbers. Like, as you said, many of us are comparing the conversion numbers and all that stuff, but look at the numbers that, that really matter, like uh, the, the customer value uh, and, right. and the commitment that uh, you, you want the viewers to take, the, the commitment you want them to go through, and then right. uh, synchronize that with the offer that you have because all that uh, depends on how, how it will convert and the value that, will, that you will get from the landing page and from the email sequence and all that stuff. Um, right. And... Let's move on to subject lines. We all know that, <laughs> that how, how much they, they matter, <laughs> like both for blog posts and for emails, how important they are, and everyone has an opinion uh, when it comes to subject right. lines. Right. Uh, but I'm more <sighs> curious on how you work with, that, uh, with, with subject lines. So what's the process and how do you usually decide what subject line you are going to use? Okay, so um, I, I really like this question. Because it's I, a tough one, ask, though. It's a tough yeah, one. It's a tough one, and I've been asked, asked this a lot. And um, now there are a lot of you know, subject line templates out there, and you can pretty much um, get one and buy one from, from, from the course. But the, the rule that I go with subject lines is that I use Intrigue. I use Intrigue. Again, this is, you know, this different from plain curiosity. Right? Not just getting them curious, but you're getting them intrigued. I mean, intrigue means there's a scheme or a plot behind the the subject line. Uh, what I what, you know, because the, the way I usually write my emails is that I look for a problem um, for for that specific market. Say, for example, I'm writing for the for the freelancing market, right? Now, there's a the usual issue that they have is that they are afraid of taking the chance and jumping off, you know, uh, jumping on the, the freelancing train. 
Okay. So that's the problem. So what I ask myself is that, okay, so fear of taking a change is like, I'm looking for similes, metaphors, or story that I could connect to that specific problem. So fear of taking a chance is, turns out I remember the, the Houdini story. Uh, if you, you know, if you know Houdini, who mm-hmm. Houdini is, right? There was a story about, you know, uh, about Houdini who was, uh, there was kind of like, you know, this, um, this gig gone wrong where he was unable to escape and turns out the lock was open all along. So he went through all the trouble of, you know, picking the lock. But in fact, all he had to do was like push the door and, and that was it. Okay. So like the theme. So that gets what my subject line is. So it, it, should, it could be, you know, the, what Houdini can teach you about freelancing or the Houdini method of freelancing. You're basically building an intrigue on the subject line and the payoff is right on the email because it's sometimes I, I see marketers use curiosity like a whole lot. Like, did you see this? Mm. Right? Not that, not, not. Yeah. But the problem, the, the problem with that is if you're not paying off that curiosity in your, sub, in your email, you just betrayed your reader's trust. Yeah, you just betrayed their, you know, their trust in, uh, you know, uh, their, just the fact that they checked your email, they may not do it again, right? Because you just baited, you know, it's like bait and switch. Now, that's what you're trying to avoid. That's why I use intrigue rather than curiosity because I make sure that what I'm going to put on there on the subject line is going to be tied up in, in what I'm saying inside the, the email. Now, uh, you, you can use plain curiosity on your email. Say, for example, um, did you see this, blah, 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 blah. But, you know, you have to be careful that if you, if you keep on doing that, like, like every other day, right, you have high opens. But guess what? You have, you're gonna have, not going to have any sales, right? So when you feel cheated, guess what? No one's going to read your emails ever again. So that's, that's what usually happens. But, you know, um, all, that, all the tactics aside, all strategies aside, what I always tell my clients is that, like, what, what subject line should I use? About, you know, and all that, all those questions. What I usually tell them is that, um, to be honest, I, I don't really care about much about subject lines. What I care about is that once they see my name, my name is enough to get them to open it. Mm. That's the kind of like the effect that I, that I want my subscribers to get from me. In fact, I've, I've been testing this. I did like a 30-day challenge to myself on the freelancing list. I've, uh, this, this, these are daily emails, and, I'm, and I've been getting 70% open rates from day one to day, what day is it today? Like 27. To day 27. I can show you the screenshot, screenshot later on. But it's like 70%. That's freaking unbelievable. Although it's like just a list of like 327 people, but still – in order to get like 70%, and sometimes my subject line is as simple as, um, I haven't eaten today. Mm. I was trying to break every rule about subject lines because I'm trying to prove a point that, if the, you know, that your name is more important than what's on the subject line. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm, on the, I'm on day 27, and, it, and I think I've, I've made my point that <laughs> the subject line is not really that important. So, Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was going to ask you uh, about the common mistake that, that entrepreneurs do or maybe customers of yours are doing, but I don't want to ask that question because what you said, I really loved what you said about um, it's your name, like the value you give before they opt in, the value you give when they are about to opt in and the value that you give uh, right after the moment they opted in. I mean, that's, that's what matters and they will open your emails no matter what subject line you're using. If you, if it's good, if it's bad, if you intrigue, if you use curiosity or whatever. So that's why I don't want to ask that question anymore. Because <laughs> what, what, what you said that that's more valuable than the answer someone can give for that question. That what that's what I think. Well, thank you. I, uh, dude, I'm gonna show you this screenshot later on. Seriously, it's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> I'm looking. I'm looking forward, man. And let's move on to the email itself. And the intro part of your email is obviously very important in order for you to capture the reader's attention. Uh, what goes into a good intro? Okay. Now, 
for a good intro, I my go to really that like my go to intro is I always start in the middle. Like if you're telling a story, find the climax and start there. That's usually a, a good intro. So say for example, um, I'm gonna say uh, that was that was his you know, mother's last breath. Not not not. Mm. Now they're gonna, you know they're gonna willing to find out like what is this guy talking about, right? That's that's the whole point. It's to say, um, call me Roger. And, you know, uh, subject line, and then call me Roger. I'll get back, and I, I'll you know I'll tell you what I meant in a sec. But and then I'm gonna start with another story. So it's kind of like I'm, I'm hooking them in with something that's totally trivial. And what they're gonna find out is that it's part of the you know the climax of the story. So I just like have a story right there. I just write a story, and then I get the most interesting part. I put it right in the right in the beginning. <laughs> That's kind of like what I do. Now the second uh, the second good intro is um, tell your own story, like a slice of life. Like someone sent me a message, or um, someone texted me earlier, or I talked to someone, you know, something like that. Like you know, I, I went to a store of wine. By the way, if, if, if the, mo- the fact that you're publishing these emails, right, those subscribers are looking into you as sort of a guru, right? Even if you don't want to admit it, they're looking up to you because anyone who can publish a like book, newspaper, people are always looking up to you, right? It's like, you know, uh, every time you can publish something, you're, you're like putting yourself one level on top. Now, what, what, what people love most is gossip, right? It's like, I mean... It, it, it's it's the the innate nature of folks to to want to find out what's happening with someone's you know someone's someone else's life, especially if they're famous. And since you're kind of famous, right? <laughs> that's <laughs> that's what happens when you hear like a small bite sized piece of your life, like what happened today. Like I'm drink, like even just the fact that you're drinking coffee at Starbucks, or <laughs> like what flavor of Starbucks you have, or what music are you listening to, those are good starters. And the third, uh, my third favorite is starting with something that's uh, contrarian, something that's not widely accepted. Mm. Um, say, for example, if I if I tell like on this podcast, if I tell people that you know, open, I don't care about open clicks, I don't care about click rates because they suck. More of you know, and I started with that. Chances are, people are going to listen. Uh, because, you know, the, the, behind the reason why I told you know tell them that, right? So. Basically, the starters are just to get them through the, the middle part or you give out the lesson. Yeah. That, so that's, that's it. Yeah, that's a test that we can do to use that subject line for the podcast episode and see what happens, the reactions. Uh, <laughs> but as much as we hate to admit it, we love gossip. Uh, and obviously, that's working. But I really love the fact and the examples that you gave about starting in the middle of a story because that automatically, that, that it will capture the reader. Um, by the way, we're having uh, internet connection trouble, but I hope you can hear what, what John is saying because it's really valuable. It's really good advice. And let's also talk about the outro as well. Let's say you're sending an email and have one clear call to action that you want the readers to take. Uh, do you mm-hmm. find getting better results with sharing that call to action throughout the email? but having the best uh, call to action at the end, uh, in the beginning, or, or are you only sharing one call to action at the end of it? Okay. That's a really good question because I've, I've seen marketers saying, um, okay, I'm doing like three links, one at the beginning, one at the middle, one at the end, just so they would click. Mm. Others would say, I, I would only do at the, you know, at the end. Some, some would say I would do in the middle, but you know, Technically, there's really no right or wrong answer to that. Now, what I found is that any click that's not imbued with the intention to buy or to know more is a wasted click. I'm not after vanity stats, like how many clicked on the link. That's, that's BS, right? You, you can't you know, measure your success by, by counting how many, you know, how many clicked. Mm. You can measure your success by you know, determining how many bought. Now, here's the danger between putting a link too early in the email. If they're not ready yet, if you haven't made your case yet and you put the link at the beginning, chances are, if, even if they click on they're not going to buy, right? 
So as much as possible, you want to make them click as soon as you feel that they're ready, that they're informed, that they're, you know, okay, so this is the case that I have. Here's a link. It doesn't, you don't have to be fancy about it. Just let them know exactly what's going to happen or this part that they need when they click. But if you put it out right there, like you start an email, right? If you have, oh, by the way, John, hey, John, um, uh, uh, John here. If you haven't seen this, click here. Dude, those are wasted clicks. Unless your sales page is freaking awesome. <laughs> unless you're, you know, unless the one who wrote that is Gary Halliburton or I don't know, or, or some other copy uh, god, then I don't think it's going to make any sense. Right, but compare that to someone who wrote, uh, you know, like 200, 300 words, cared enough to let you know exactly, like inspire you to take that click. Guess what? They're more prone. They're now in the, you know, in the headspace of wanting to know more and wanting to buy. Mm. Whereas if it's on the first one, the first, like the beginning, right? I'm not in the headspace of wanting to buy. I'm just uh, click here. Okay. That's like, oh, oh crap, I, I didn't, didn't want to click anyway. I just want to check it out. <laughs> that's that's kind of what happens. So. And to, to just jump in real quickly, uh, to me, it would also feel a little bit spammy, you know, to just get an email. Hey, what's up, Joseph? Here's my link. Uh, click to see what it is. I know it just feels so spammy to have an email, a link in an email that early without any information for me to, to base my decision on if I want to click or not. Right. But here's the thing. It, it, let's say, for example, you have a really, uh, really um, short email, right? And the email says, um, say, for example, you're catering to people with arthritis and then your sales page is about arthritis and stuff. You can literally put out a, a link on there at the beginning and say, um, is your like a symptom of arthritis, right? Uh, is, is your, you know, are your knees giving out? Question mark. If they are, click here. Now that's a, a, a useful link because you inform them about the symptom that they have and then, you know, give them a, a, an option if they want to know more or, you know, at least you probably already know that they're going to buy something right, when they click that. Mm. So at least they're in that headspace. But, you know, it, it's, it's right in the beginning, but the rule is imbued with the intention to know more or to buy the, the to buy the whole thing that's really interesting how to use that that question right there in the beginning and just to make people take action and to make them click uh on your link um and john before we hit the last the last <laughs> okay. part of this interview share the best way people can find you online to connect more with you okay uh people are gonna find this weird but um <laughs> but I always tell, but I always tell people that um, usually if they haven't reached six figures yet, they, they probably don't need a website. That's what I, that's what I usually tell them. But um, I, I I don't have a website right now that I that I that I can share. Although I do have rightsandconvert.com. Although I'm not really uh, how can I say like taking care of it. But um, uh, maybe probably as soon as you publish you know publish this. I could probably have something on there. I can give away the the webinar that I did wearing the seven puzzle pieces to convert prospects to um, customers. So I bet they'll, they'd love that. So I could give that away on there. Um, aside from that, just just Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> you can prob probably find me <laughs> uh, on the rest of the you know, friends list. I'm, I'm on there. Keep it simple. And uh, that's also uh, an, a, a great fact uh, of you that uh, without having a website uh, and you're still doing six figures. So that, that shows how close you're working with the people you're working and how many are recommending you to someone else because of the work that you do. But <laughs> that, that link will be linked below this interview uh, and your Facebook will be linked as well. So people can reach out to you to connect more with you and to learn more about what you do. Um, and now it's, Thanks, time for, uh, now it's time for the last the last part of this interview. Uh -oh. uh, I, I call it the unexpected three, where I will ask you three random questions. Are mm -hmm. you ready, man? Do I have a choice? Uh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Let's do it. Uh, so number one, 
what is one of your favorite resources or online tools right now that you are using? I have two. Uh, Google Docs, because that's where I submit my projects, and um, Drudge Report. It's uh, drudgereport.com. It's, uh, it's a, I, I, know, I know if you've seen it, but I've heard it from Ben Sumo. It's, uh, it's kind of like a, a tabloid, so to speak. Mm. And it, it contains, uh, let, me, let, me, let me go there right now. Um, let's say, for example, um, there's a, unemployment is 4.5%, something like that. Like, really interesting topics. Um, high winds bring down cherry trees. <laughs> like, really mundane, you know, like what happens when you plank every day? <laughs> or uh, gay voters and, and embrace French far right. I don't know, like, really mundane topics. And I just, like, go there and then and I see, you know, whoa, I, I think I can use this. So when I, when I use those themes as a, you know, as a, how do I say it? Like as a um, very result of that, I, I you know, I kind of get the, these interesting subject lines because mm-hmm. it's, it's not, you know, it's not ordinary. It's, it's far out. Like my, man flies hoverboard over, across Atlantic. So those are kind of like the headlines that, that's on here and you can pretty much use it on your topics. Based on the description of that website, that's clearly a Ben Settle recommendation because he's always <laughs> he's always using that kind of stuff, that kind of information to intrigue people to open his emails and he's amazing at what he does. So uh, that will also be linked below this interview so people can check that out. So let's let's move to to question number two. Uh, if you have if you have had one crazy moment uh, where you got amazing results from this one email sequence. Uh, it could be revenue growth, feedback, or recommendations, or anything that, that you, you would just, wow, this is amazing. Uh, choose one thing from that experience that you think uh, was the most important one. What was it? Complaints. That was the most important part for me. Um, and the reason for that was, those, you know, I, there was this campaign where we did almost half a million dollars. In, in launch money, and it turns it turns it was the the campaign that I did that had most complaints. So, in in a way, there's a there's a you know there's this line that you you're, you're going to have to cross if you really want to sell. That not you know not being spammy or not being too pushy, but rather if you're really doing selling effectively, you know. There's, there are bound. There are people that are bound to, you know, to, to be pissed off. That's that's just the nature of, of you know, of the piece. They're, you're going to get unsubscribes. You're going to get, you know, emails saying I, I don't like your emails anymore. All that. Even if you're you're just about helping out. Even if you're not even selling, there are people going to stop emailing. I don't need this. Then why you subscribe in the first place, right? <laughs> but but there are a whole lot of those people and. What what that experience taught me is that, and if if you know if you really care about the the product that you're selling, right? If you really care about it, then there's 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 uh, there's got to be no reason at all for you to you know to stop selling on on what's going to make the, your life better because you know that you're, that's going to make their life better, right? The, you know, the only ones who are afraid of selling are your, are your thinking, you know, I know if you're selling drugs, you, you ought to be afraid of selling, right? But like, because I, I get pe- business owners asking me like, Do, don't you think this is too much emails? Like, uh, let's just say, for example, you're curing cancer, you have the cure for cancer, right? And this email is the one that's going to change that, you know, save that person's life. Then I ask them, like, would you hesitate to send that email out? That's that's my only you know that's the only thing. Mm. If they get pissed while you're trying to help out, help out, so be it. You're just trying to save someone else's life. That's amazing. And actually, uh, the first uh, selling email that I sent out back in the days, I uh, immediately got got a complaint and a, and a few unsubscribed <laughs> from that one email. But you can use the complaints to improve your product, your your uh, emails, and your product launch. Uh, for the next launch that you're having. So there are, um, there are ways to improve and to use the complaints uh, 
in, in, in good ways. So uh, let's move on to, to the last question, number three. Take us back to the day uh, to the day you decided to go your own way with the experience and knowledge that you have today. What is one advice that you would give to yourself back then? Hmm. Well, don't ask my list how to sell them. Because sometimes as a business owner, it should be kind of like, you know, are they going to be pissed off if I send this? And then we, we tend to survey a lot, right? We tend to ask a lot, would you guys want this, right? Would you, and, and I've learned that unless they vote with their wallets, unless they give me their money, it's not a natural vote. It doesn't count. Mm. So what I, what I just do is that I get what their problems are um, using the ask method. And, and I, I'm really good and I'm really proud that, uh, that I, that I, that I, that I kind of know that method um, from, from inside and out um, and got to work with Ryan because the fact that you're surveying what they don't want is really genius. <laughs> it's like, you know, you really, because people don't really know what is it that they want in life, but what they don't want, they, they, have, they have that in spades. Mm -hmm. So just that fact that you have that info, you can already work out a campaign. And just, you know, do a mini launch if, if, you know, if ever. But don't ever ask your list how they want to be sold. Because more often than not, they're going to say, okay, just send me one email a week. <laughs> or just, you know, we don't want you to be salesy. We don't want you to, you know. And, and all those, it, it affects your, you know, your, your momentum. Like whenever I read those things, like, I'm like, oh my, oh my God, if, I, if I'm going to follow all these, I'm not going to send an email. Mm. that's that's what's gonna happen so yeah don't ask you know your audience how to sell them it's like asking you know asking a deer how to hunt itself so survey your audience to find out what they want but don't ask how to sell to them and i think that's a great way to finish but john before we end this i want to acknowledge you for for the giving spirit that you have uh we know each other for a while and are connected right. in different groups and then i know the value that you give in the groups but also today which is really fantastic and i i'm so happy to have you on the show uh and i want to thank you for being here you're welcome man i i had a blast really this is this is just really how i go with big podcast i have i have no I, I don't try to dress up or anything. I, this is just the way I am. But yeah, thanks really. I, huh, I was able to do some brain dump that I've been, I've been keeping for this past few days. <laughs> Perfect. And, and I'm sure both the audience and I have, uh, have loved this information. And see you guys on the next episode of the Box of Inspirations show.